focus, I'm focused More right now than I've ever been Cause the time is short, the wall's closing in And my patience is paid But then I'm too much for this righteous life To be headed back to that life of sin That Babylon with my nightlight ain't looking back Lock twice, let's go Let's go. Let's get it, that's out of my Ain't never been with it Too many hands off Long intro, I'm so sick. Officer Matthias. Today's lesson is entitled The Principle of Fasting and Praying. Alright, coming into this truth, we gotta learn that everything we've been taught is wrong in America. Alright, so we gotta come back to our true nationality, our true culture, our true heritage. And a big element, a big part of that is learning how to properly pray and fast. So today we're gonna learn how to pray. We're going to learn when to pray. We're going to learn what to pray about. Why are our prayers being answered and how to get our prayers answered? All right, we're going to start out with Romans 15 and 4. All right, because we must learn from our forefathers. We must learn what did they do? How did they do it? Why did they do it? And what results did they get? All right, and once we get that, we can apply that in our own lives. Read that. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Mm-hmm. For whatsoever things were written afore time, mm -hmm. were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Right, we might have hope. So we must go back into the history and we must learn. When did our forefathers pray? How did they pray? What did they pray about? Why did they fast? When did they fast? How long did they fast? We must go to the scriptures and learn these things. Give me Nehemiah 8 and 8. Alright, because once we do that, this, the Bible says we will have comfort and hope through these scriptures. So that's what we pray that you that you get from watching and, and uh, listening in this class. Nehemiah chapter eight verse eight. Mm -hmm. So they read in the book of the law. I'm sorry, and they read in the book in the law mm -hmm. of God distinctly. Distinctly, read. And gave the sense. All right, and they gave the sense of the scriptures. Read. And caused them to understand the reading. And that's what we pray we can do for you today. We're going to go into these scriptures and we're going to give you the sense. We're going to give you the understanding of how to pray, how to fast. All right. So the first question, how do we properly pray and fast? All right. We're going to deal with prayer first. Give me 1 Kings 8, 22. Because growing up, the white man has taught us that you bow your head, you cross your, you cross your hands, and you pray to seize your boys. You. But we're going to go into the scriptures and we're going to see is that... Is that true according to the Bible? All right. What, what scripture tells us to cross our hands? What scripture? Read that. First Kings 8 and verse 22. Mm -hmm. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord mm -hmm. in the presence of all the congregation of Israel mm -hmm. and spread forth his hands. And did what? And spread forth his hands uh -huh. toward heaven. You see that? He spread forth his hands toward heaven. You can do it this way. Or that way. Either way, but you're supposed to spread your hands, not close them together in a fist. All right, give me 1 Kings 8 and 35. So the first thing we learn is that we spread forth our hands to heaven. Read that. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 35. Mm -hmm. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain, mm -hmm. because they have sinned against thee, mm -hmm. if they pray toward this place. If they what? If they pray towards this so place. So now we get a direction we're supposed to pray. The, the Solomon says we're supposed to pray toward Jerusalem. So here in America, we pray to the east. If I was in China, I would pray toward the north. All right, so you should pray in the land. You should pray toward the land of Jerusalem. All right, so now we learn our, head, our hands are supposed to be spread forth. We're supposed to face the east or face toward Jerusalem. All right, your head should be covered or uncovered, depending on if you're male or female. Now, what should you say? Should you just say anything that comes to mind? Give me Sirach chapter 18 and verse 23. Because in the Christian church, a lot of times anybody, they get up there and they just say whatever comes to mind. All right? They say some nonsense. Let's see if we're supposed to be like that. Read that. Sirach chapter 18, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Before thou prayest. Before thou prayest. Read. Prepare thyself. Do what? Prepare thyself. Right. So if you know a situation is going to arise where you're going to have to pray for the congregation or pray for your family, the most I say is prepare yourself. Don't just say anything that comes to mind. From there, give me Sirach 33 and 4. All right, because us becoming repentant Israelites, we must learn and apply these scriptures in our lives. Read that. Sirach chapter 33 verse 4. Uh-huh. Prepare what to say. Do what? Prepare what to say. Read. And so thou shalt be heard. You see that? And so thou shalt be heard. Who's going to heed? The Most High. Because he will honor your prayer. Why? Because you thought about what you're saying. You understood that you're, you're, you're sending up requests to the most high God of the heaven and the earth. And you are being sincere and you're thinking about what you're saying. Give me Sirach 7 and 14. All right, because this is a very, very serious 
issue that we're dealing with. We're praying to the most powerful force on the face of the earth, of the world, of the planet, of everything. Read that. Sirach chapter 7 verse 14. Mm -hmm. Use not many words and a multitude of elders. Right. When you're around wise men, don't use a lot of words. Listen. Read. And make not much babbling uh -huh. when thou pray. The same thing when you're around the Most High. The Most High don't want to hear a lot of babbling. Make it quick. Make it to the point. All right. So we got fat, we got praying down. Now let's go into fasting. Give me Jonah chapter 3 verse 5. Because growing up in the Christian church, I know you told me many times that our parents have been on David fast, Daniel fast, you, where you can only eat fruit and water. Where is that at in the scriptures? We must go into the scriptures and find out. Well, where is this David fast? Where is this Daniel fast? Guess what, brothers and sisters? It's not in there, all right? It is not in there. There's no such thing as just eating fruit and eating vegetables. That's just a healthy What's diet. What's it? Yeah. Jonah chapter oh, 3, verse 5. Sure. All right? That is nothing more than a healthy diet. Let's find out exactly what a fast is according to the Most High God. All right? Chapter 3, verse 5. Uh-huh. So the people of Nineveh believed God mm -hmm. and proclaimed a fast. Proclaimed a what? A fast. Uh-huh. And put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. So now they proclaimed a fast. Now let's see what this fast entails. Re jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh mm -hmm. by the decree of the king mm -hmm. and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, mm -hmm. taste anything. Do what? Taste anything. Read. Let them not feed. Let them not eat, meaning feed. Read. Nor drink water. Nor drink water. So when you're fasting, you're not tasting anything. No water, no fruit, nothing. You can't even brush your teeth when you're fasting. The Most High says nothing is to touch your mouth or no, no solids is supposed to touch your mouth. Further proof. Give me first Ezra's chapter 9. Because Ezra's fasted all the time. Let's see what he did when he, was, when he fasted. All right. First Ezra's chapter 9 and verse 1. So, we're tearing down the lie that a fast is just water or that is just fruit. That's not a fast, all right? That is just a diet. Read that. First Ezra, chapter 9, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then Ezra, rising from the court of the temple, went to the chamber of Joannan, the son of Elisa, uh -huh. and remained there and did eat no meat. And did what? Eat no meat. He didn't eat anything. Read. Nor drink water. Nor did what? Nor drink water. Read. Mourning for the great iniquities of the multitude. You see that? They were fasting and mourning. So when he was fasting, he didn't eat any food or any meat. Another example. Now, give me Isaiah 58 and 5. All right. You know what? Give me 1 Corinthians 7 and 5. All right. Because there's another thing that happens when you're fasting. All right. Because you don't eat any water. You don't eat any food or drink any water. Nothing. You're not supposed to taste anything while you're fasting. Why? Because you're denying your flesh. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 5. Read that. First Corinthians chapter seven verse five. Mm -hmm. Defraud ye not one the other, mm -hmm. except it be with consent for a time, mm -hmm. that ye may give yourselves to fast. To what? To fasting. Read and prayer. So when you are fasting, you're not to have any intercourse, any sexual relations with your wife. All right, because why you're denying the flesh? That would be pleasurable. If I'm fasting and I can still deal with my wife, why? Give me Isaiah fifty-eight and five. All right, a fast is. You're solely your face, you're putting all your attitudes, efforts, your mind. Everything is focused on the most high God of Israel. Alright? Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 5. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? Uh -huh. A day for a man to afflict his soul. A day for what? A day for a man to afflict his soul. You see that? This is supposed to be a day that you're afflicting your soul. Give me Matthew chapter 6. So while you're afflicting your soul, you're not eating. You're not drinking anything. You're not having any intercourse with your wife. All you're doing is fasting and praying to the Most High God of Israel. You're meditating on the scriptures. All right? Give me Matthew chapter 6 and verse 16. Read that. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Moreover, when ye fast, mm -hmm. be not as the hypocrites. So when you fast, don't be as the hypocrites. Read. Of a sad countenance. Uh -huh. For they disfigure their faces. That they may appear unto men to fast. Uh -huh. Very ver verily I say unto you, they have the reward. So the most I say, when you fast, don't don't make it look all sad and hey, I'm fasting, yeah, I know I was. No, he says don't do that. Read. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face. Read. 
that thou appear not unto men to fast. So when you're fasting, you don't make it public to everybody. Read. But unto thy father, which mm -hmm. is in secret. Read. And thy father, which seeth in secret, mm -hmm. shall reward thee openly. All right. So you see that? It should be hidden. All right. So that's how you should deal. That's how you should handle yourself while you're fasting. Give me Matthew 6 and 5. Now let's let's see. How should we deal with each other while we're praying? How should we pray? All right. Matthew chapter 6 verse 5. Read that. Matthew chapter 6 verse 5. Mm -hmm. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. So don't be like the Christian church. Read. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues mm -hmm. and in the corners of the streets. Right. The, the, those Christians that come out there and they just want to be seen of men but don't want to keep any commandments. Read. That they may be seen of men. Mm -hmm. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. Read. But thou, when thou prayest, uh -huh. when we pray, read. Enter into thy closet. All right, enter into our closet. Now, when it says a closet, it's not talking about a literal closet. It's talking about a place where you can get your thoughts and your prayers together. Everything, you're in a position where you're not worrying about everything. You don't got the TV on loud. The kids ain't messing around. You're in a quiet, solitary place. Read. And when thou hast shut thy door, mm -hmm. pray to thy father, which is in secret. Read. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. All right. Now give me Matthew 14 and 23, just to show you that he was not talking about a literal closet. Because some of our people might think that. All right. Because a lot of times you were not able to interpret the scriptures correctly. But let, I'm going to show you because Christ set the perfect example. Matthew 14 and 23. Matthew chapter 14 verse 23 mm -hmm. and when he had sent the multitudes away mm -hmm. he went up into a mountain apart to pray so he went up into a mountain apart from everybody else a closet to pray read and when the evening was come uh -huh. he was there alone he was there what alone you see that he went up to the mountain alone that's that's the closet is just is just giving you an example of a place where you're by yourself all right now so, now we learned how to properly pray and fast. Now let's find out, how often should we do these things? Give me Psalms 55 and 16. Because a lot of times, growing up in the Christian church, the pastor teaches us, when, when do, when do uh, predominantly we send up our prayers? When we go to sleep at night, right? That's what we're always taught. Make sure you send up your prayers before you go to sleep, that the most I keep you, and if you, if you die in your sleep, that you go to heaven. But let's see, did our forefathers only pray before they went to sleep? Read that. Psalms chapter 55 verse 16 mm -hmm. As for me, I will call upon God And the Lord shall save me mm -hmm. Evening and, uh -huh. and morning Evening, morning, read And at noon And at noon, read Will I pray Will I do what? Pray You see that? Evening, morning, and noon Meaning our forefathers always pray to the Most High Read Will I pray and cry aloud uh -huh. And he shall hear my voice Now, give me Psalms 5 and 3 so he said morning, evening, and noon. So there's, you don't only pray at nighttime. That's not scriptural. Read that. Psalms chapter 5 verse 3. Mm -hmm. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning. My voice shalt thou hear when? In the morning. Uh -huh. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, uh -huh. and I will look up. All right. Now give me uh, Daniel 6 and 10. So they, our forefathers are praying in the morning. First thing. Why? They're showing you where they're where their mindset is, what they're focused on, what's important to them. The second they pop up, I'm praying to the Most High God. Not when, I, not only when I go to sleep, but right when I wake up as well. Read that. Daniel chapter six verse ten. Mm -hmm. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, mm -hmm. he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. Toward what? Jerusalem. Showing you that he followed the same example that Solomon set. Read. He kneeled upon his knees. Showing you that you can kneel as well, stand or kneel. Read. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day. How many times? Three times a day. Read. And prayed uh -huh. and gave thanks before his God. You see that? He prayed three times a day. Now, let's see how often should we fast. All right? And there's many more examples of our forefathers praying constantly, all the time. Now, let's go into fasting. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Let's see how often should we pray. Because we know for a fact that we all must fast on the day of atonement but other than that should we ever fast outside of that let's see let's see the example that our forefathers set forth the four verse one mm -hmm. then was jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil read and when he had fasted when he what when he had fasted read. 40 days and 40 nights fasted what 40 days and 40 nights uh-huh 
he was afterward and hungry. Give me Exodus 34 and 28. So right here, Christ is showing you how much, how long you can fast. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. All right, so when we fast once a day, we should look. Dang, well, Christ did it 40 days and 40 nights. That's the example that he set for us. Read that. Exodus chapter 34, verse 28. Mm -hmm. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. Read. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. He what? He did neither eat bread nor drink water. Uh -huh. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, mm -hmm. the Ten Commandments. You see that? Moses did the same thing. For 40 days and 40 nights, our forefathers didn't eat, didn't drink. Give me 2 Ezra chapter 5. 2 Ezra chapter 5, verse 19. So they're giving us a great example of how often we, we can pray. So it's nothing for us to fast one day or two days. Our forefathers did it for 40 days at a time. All right, 2 Ezra chapter 5 and 19. Read that. 2 Ezra chapter 5, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Then said I unto him, Go thy ways from me, mm -hmm. and come not nigh me. Mm -hmm. And he heard what I said, and went from me. And so I fasted seven days. He fasted what? Seven days, uh -huh. mourning and weeping, mm -hmm. like as Uriel the angel commanded me. Uh -huh. And after seven days, so it was, mm -hmm. that the thoughts of my heart were very grievous unto me again. So let's see what happened after those seven days of fasting, though. Read. And my soul recovered the spirit of understanding. He gained the spirit of understanding. Read. And I began to talk with the Most High again. You see that? The Most High was opening up his understanding. He was talking with him. Why? Because he sacrificed his body for seven days. He afflicted his soul for seven days and seven nights. Now, give me Judah 8. Judah chapter 8, verse 6. And don't think that only our forefathers fasted. We got examples of our righteous foremothers showing the example of how often we should fast and pray. Give me that. Judith chapter 8 verse 6 mm -hmm. and she fasted all the days of her widowhood she did what fasted all the days of her widowhood she fasted every single day except what save the eves of the sabbath except the nights of the sabbath and the sabbath mm -hmm. and the eves of the new moon uh -huh. and the new moons mm -hmm. and the feast and solemn days of the house of israel you see that judah fasted every day except the high holy days that's showing you a righteous example if you need one. That our foremothers did the same thing. All right, from there. So now we figured out how often we should pray. All right, we got how often, we figured out how we should pray. Now, here's the main question. What should we pray for? All right, what should we pray for? Give me Matthew chapter 6. We're going to read just 7 and 8. Because a lot of our people, we pray for crazy things. I know growing up, I used to pray every night that I would be the first ever athlete to be drafted in the NBA and NFL. Now, when I look at that today, I laugh. Why? And I, there's no question why my prayers didn't get answered. It wasn't in line with the will of God. And as repentant Israelites, we got to understand that some things that we pray for, we're not getting it because it don't line up with God. Read that. Matthew chapter 6, verse 7. Mm -hmm. But when ye pray, mm -hmm. use not vain repetitions. So don't use vain repetitions. Read. As the heathen do. Mm -hmm. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Read. Be not ye therefore like unto them. So don't say the same thing over and over again. Alright? Don't do that. Read. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of. So what? For your father knoweth what things ye have need of uh -huh. before you ask him. So the Most High already knows what we need. So he all he wants is for us to humble down and make our request to him. Alright? Then we'll prove that with the scripture. Give me uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. So what we should be praying for is what we need. Why? Because the Most already knows what we need. But he wants to see us humble down and ask him. He wants to see our level of faith. Read that. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Be careful for nothing, uh -huh. but in everything by prayer. In everything by prayer. Read. And supplication mm -hmm. with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Let your what? Let your request be made known unto God. You see that? You got to make your request known unto God. Because he already knows it. But he, want, he wants you to make it known to him. Alright? Give me uh, 1 John 5 and 14. And this is what is going to happen when we do make his request known to him. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14 and 15. 1 John chapter 5 verse 14. Mm -hmm. And this is the confidence that we have in him. Uh-huh. 
that if we ask anything according to his will. Anything what? According to his will. You see that? It got to line up with God's will. Read. He heareth us. Uh huh. And if we know that he hear us, uh -huh. whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. All right. So now, that's one thing we should pray for. We should make our own request known before the Most High God. Now, give me uh, Sirach chapter 36. Sirach chapter 36 and verse 1. We're going to show you how our forefathers prayed. Because the scripture says we got to learn from our history. What did our forefathers pray for? Did they only pray for... Uh, cars and clothes and money. Let's see. Read that. So Rock chapter 30, 36. We're going to start at 1. We're going to read all the way down. 17. So Rock chapter 36 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Have mercy upon us, O Lord of... I'm sorry, O Lord God of all. Mm -hmm. And behold us. Read. And send thy fear upon the nations that seek not after thee. So our forefathers prayed that these other nations would have the most high God hunting. Read. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations. Do what? Lift up thy hand against the strange nations. Read. And let them see thy power. Our forefathers prayed for the Most High to unleash his fury on. Read. As thou was sanctified in us before them, mm -hmm. so be thou magnified among them before us. Mm -hmm. And let them know thee as we have known thee, uh -huh. that there is no God but only thou, O God. Read. Show new signs. And make other strange wonders. So our forefathers were hoping that the Most High God would unleash his power on the other nations. They weren't soft. They weren't praying for these other nations. Read. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm, mm -hmm. that they may set forth thy wondrous works. Read. Raise up indignation. Do what? Raise up indignation. Read. And pour out wrath. You see that? They were asking for God to pour out wrath. Read. Take away the adversary. Do what? Take away the adversary. Read. And destroy the enemy. And destroy the enemy. Read. Make the time short. We should be praying that the Most High makes our time in captivity short. Read. Remember the covenant mm -hmm. and let them declare thy wonderful works. Read. Let him that escapeth be consumed by the rage of the fire. Mm -hmm. And let them perish that oppress the people. Right. They were hoping that those, those, those unrighteous heathen would perish. Read. Smite and sundered the heads of the rulers of the heathen that they that say there is none other but we read gather all the tribes of Jacob That's together. That's what we should be praying for that the, all the 12 tribes are coming together read and inherit thou them as from the beginning. Mm -hmm. O Lord have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name. We should ask for mercy from the most high God read and upon Israel whom thou hast named thy firstborn mm -hmm. be Oh, be merciful unto Jerusalem, mm -hmm. thy holy city, the place of thy rest. Mm -hmm. Fill Zion with thy unspeakable oracles, mm -hmm. and thy people with the glory, with Read. thy glory. Give testimony unto those that thou hast possessed from the beginning, uh -huh. and raise up prophets. And do what? Raise up prophets. We should be praying that the Most High God raises up prophets. Read. That have been in thy name. Mm -hmm. Reward them that wait for thee. And let thy prophets be found faithful. Mm -hmm. O Lord, hear the prayer of thy servants according to the blessing of Aaron mm -hmm. over thy people. That all they which dwell upon the earth may know that thou art the Lord, the eternal God. Alright, so that's a, just, that's a beautiful example of a prayer of one of our forefathers. He's praying for the destruction of the other nations. He's praying for mercy. He's praying that the prophets uh, return. Alright? So that's showing you the mindset of our forefathers, all right? Now, give me James chapter 5, verse 13. James chapter 5, verse 13. So he's showing you that all our prayers, our prayers were not selfish. It wasn't only about us. It wasn't only about, Lord, I hope I get a new house. I hope I get a new car. I hope I get a new job. No, we were praying about the nation. It wasn't about the individual. Read that, James chapter 5, verse 13. James chapter 5, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Is any among you afflicted? Uh -huh. Let him pray. Mm -hmm. Is any merry? Mm -hmm. Let him sing songs. Read. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. So when you're sick, you should pray for, pray for people. Read. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Read. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be, give, be forgiven him. Read. Confess your faults one to another Read. and pray 
one for another. And do what? And pray one for another. Read. That ye may be healed, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So, the key part right there is that we should be praying for one another. So, if you, if you ever get done praying and you're not praying for somebody else, you're in the wrong spirit. All right, you must pray for one another. All right, give me um, Philippians 1 and 3. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Because we must understand in our repentance that prayer is not only about us making our own request known, but the request of others. All right, the most I likes that. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Mm -hmm. Always in every prayer. Always in every prayer. Read. Of mine for you. Of mine for you. Read. All making requests with joy. You see that? So Paul always prayed for the other churches that he visited. He was They were always in his prayers. From there, give me uh, Acts chapter 12 and 5. Let's see. We should pray for one another. What are we praying for one another for? Because brothers and sisters... Come on hard times. They're in hard situations and they need their prayers. Read that. Acts chapter 12 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Peter therefore was kept in prison, mm -hmm. but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. You see that? So one of our brothers, one of our forefathers were in prison. And what did the church do? They sent them. Chapter 9 verse 38. Mm -hmm. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. That he will send forth laborers. That he will do what? Send forth laborers uh -huh. into his harvest. You see that? So we should be praying that the Most High send more brothers, more sisters, so that they can do this righteous work with us. Are you praying for more brothers and sisters to come? If not, you should check your spirit. Because that's what Christ said we should be praying for. All right, give me um, Colossians 1 and 9. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. So we should be praying for one another. We should be praying that these other nations are uh, faith that the Most High comes back and and spread forth His wrath upon the other nations. All right, read that. Colossians chapter one verse nine. Colossians chapter one verse nine. Mm -hmm. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, mm -hmm. do not cease to pray for you. They what? Do do not cease to pray for you. Read. And to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You see that? When they pray for one another, they pray that this brother would get all wisdom, all knowledge, and spiritual understanding. Read. That ye might walk worthy of lo of the Lord unto all pleasing, mm -hmm. being fruitful in every good work, mm -hmm. and increasing in the knowledge of God. So we pray that our brothers and sisters would be fruitful in this work. Read. Strengthened with all might, mm -hmm. according to his glorious power, Unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Now, yeah. give me 2 Thessalonians 1 and 11. So it's showing you, he's giving an outline of what we actually pray when we pray for one another. We're praying that our brothers will be strengthened with all knowledge, with all understanding, with all wisdom. All right, those are the things that we will pray for others, not just for ourselves. Read that. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, also we pray always for you mm -hmm. that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness. You see that? We would pray that we would walk worthy of the vocation wherein we were called because we understand that brothers and sisters are going to fall out, but we're going to send up prayers that though that, that, that thing does not happen, all right? That we can walk worthy of the vocation wherein we're called. Give me Luke 21 and 36. What else should we pray for? All right, because... These, these scriptures give us such a beautiful outline of how our forefathers thought. And we are not, we are not there yet. But, all praise we have these scriptures, we pray we can get that. Read that. Luke chapter 21 verse 36. Mm -hmm. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. And to stand before the Son of Man. You see that? We should watch and pray always. We should be praying that when, the, when, when Christ returns, that we are, we are able to stand knowing we kept the commandments and the faith of Christ. And guess what? We're going to get the kingdom of heaven. Christ said you should pray for that. So he's showing you that our prayers are not where they're supposed to be at. Because he wouldn't have told us what to pray for if, if we already did it. All right. Now, so now we learn what we should pray for. We learn how often we should pray and we learn how we should pray. Now, the question is, why do our prayers not get answered? Because we've been praying for years, 
And a lot of us have not had our prayers answered. Let's find out. Give me John chapter 9, verse 31. It's very simple why your prayers are not answered. But if you don't open up this Bible, you won't understand it. Read that. John chapter 9, verse 31. Mm -hmm. No, Now we know that God heareth not sinners. God what? Heareth not sinners. Read. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Now give me Isaiah 59 and 1 and 2. So God says, if you are a sinner, he is not hearing your prayer. So it's very simple why, why our prayers are not answered. One is not according to the will, and two, we're in the midst of sin. Read that. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, mm -hmm. that it cannot save. Right. Neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. So the most I'm saying is not that I'm not capable of, of answering your prayers. Read but your iniquities, but your what? Iniquities, sin. Read. Have separated between you and your God, mm -hmm. and your sins have hid His face from you, uh -huh. that He will not hear you. You see that when we in the midst of sin, the Most High God is not dealing with us. All right, give me um, give me Jeremiah chapter five and twenty-five. Jeremiah chapter five and twenty-five. So it's very simple. Why we've been in the Christian church for for years, and we've been praying hard to the Most High God. And we cannot seem to fathom, why won't he answer my prayers? Because you're in the midst of sin. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 25. Mm -hmm. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. You see that? Your sins are withholding those things from you. Because the most High knows what we want. But he wants, he wants you to put forth actions so he can put forth actions. Give me uh, James chapter 4 and 3. Let's figure out why else our prayers aren't being answered. James chapter 4 and verse 3. So sin, what else? Read that. James chapter 4 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. Ye ask, so you pray and receive not. And your prayers are not answered. Because ye ask amiss. Because you're asking for the wrong thing. You're asking for money, but you don't know how to budget it. You're asking for a wife, but you, you're not in order yet. You asking amiss. Pray that you get yourself in order first. That's why your prayer is not being answered. Read that again. Ye ask and receive not, mm -hmm. because ye ask amiss, mm -hmm. that ye may consume it upon your lust. Right. So the Most High understands that the things you're asking for, you're asking for the lust of your heart. So you're asking for a wife, but you're not ready for a wife. You're asking for more money, but you haven't learned how to manage the money that you got. You're asking for a car, but you haven't learned how to walk to the bus station yet. All right, so you got to do things in order. Then he will give you the desires of your heart when you're ready for them. All right, give me um, Matthew 17 and 20. Why else aren't our prayers being answered? Let's find out because there's, there's, there's very simple. It's either sin or you're asking amiss. You're asking for the wrong things. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of a must of mustard seed, mm -hmm. ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, uh -huh. and it shall remove, mm -hmm. and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So Christ is saying, if you got faith, nothing should be impossible unto you. Read. How be it? How be it? He's saying, however, read. This kind goeth not out, mm -hmm. but by prayer and fasting. Some things, brothers and sisters, you can't just pray about it. The Most High says some things you got to pray and fast. So you got to turn it up a bit. Maybe the Most High hearing you, but he, he want to see how bad you want it. When are you going to fast for that? When are you going to fast for that situation? You got to pray and fast. Give me 1 Peter chapter 3 and 7. All right? 1 Peter chapter 3 and 7. Another reason why your prayers are not being answered. Because when you pray, you got to be on one accord. And if you're not on one accord, the Most High is not hearing you. Read that. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, Three. giving honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel, mm -hmm. and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. That what? That your prayers be not hindered. You see that? So when you and your wife... You and your friend, you and the congregation, when you're not on one accord, your prayers are hindered according to the Bible. Now, how do we get our prayers answered? All right, we figured out why our prayers are not answered, so how do we get our prayers answered? Give me 1 Peter 3 and 12. 
First Peter chapter three verse twelve. Mm -hmm. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Read. And his ears are open unto their prayers. And his ears are what? Open unto their prayers. You see that? When you keep in God's laws, according to Deuteronomy 6 and 25, our righteousness is keeping God's laws. So when you're righteous, his ears are open to your prayers. All right? Give me Proverbs 15 and 29. Let's see if that's, that's, that's scriptural. So when we keep in the commandments, the Most High will hear our prayers. And he will answer our prayers. All right? Proverbs chapter 15, verse 29. Mm -hmm. The Lord is far from the wicked. The Lord is far from the wicked. Read. But he heareth the prayer of the righteous. But he what? Heareth the prayer of the righteous. All right, give me Hebrews 11 and 14. So, first thing, you got to be keeping the commandments. That is how he's going to hear your prayers. That's how he's going to honor your fast. That's how he's going to honor your fasting and praying. You got to be keeping the commandments. Read that. You said 11 and 14? Yes, sir. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For they that say such things uh -huh. declare plainly. They declare what? Plainly. Make your prayer and request plain. That's why the Most High said, prepare what you say. He said, don't, don't babble in front of me. They that declare such things declare plainly. Read. That they seek a country. Uh -huh. That they seek a country. So our forefathers in the past, they made it very plain. That's why when you read about our prayers, they say, smite the rulers that rule. Why? Because they wanted that. They wanted their land. That's the same mindset we should have. We should be praying, Lord, send your son so that we can return to our homeland of Jerusalem. All right? Give me uh, Luke 18 and 1. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, uh -huh. that men are always to pray. Uh -huh. And not to faint. So he's saying men should always pray and not to faint. So Christ is finna give us a prayer. Read. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. So there was a judge in this city and he didn't care about men or anything. Read. And there was a widow in that city mm -hmm. and she came unto him saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. So this mean judge has a lady that's that's pleading her case. She's saying, Avenge me of my adversary. I have this in it. And she's pleading to this man that does not care. Read. And he would not for a while. And he wouldn't listen to her for a while. Read. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, mm -hmm. yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her. Lest by her continual com coming she be she weary me. You see that? So this woman, even though this man did not care, she kept pleading her case. That's the same way we got to be with our prayers. Lord, please deliver us from the heathen. Lord, please place us back in our country. Lord, please send your son to save us. That we got we to gotta be continual in our prayers. Read. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge say. Mm-hmm. And shall not God avenge his own elect? Right. So the Christ is showing you that even this unjust judge listened to this lady. So why would not the why not would the most high God listen to us if we continue to send our prayers up? Read. Which cry day and night unto him, mm -hmm. though he bear long with them. Read. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. See that? So Christ is saying, I'm going to avenge you speedily. Read. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, when, when Christ finally does come, read, shall he find faith on earth? Right. That's why he said, pray and faint not. Give me Isaiah 62. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6 and 7. Because that those, those scriptures just showed us the Most High wants us to keep sending up those prayers. Keep troubling them. Keep sending them prayers up. All right? That's what he wants to see. Because eventually he is going to avenge us. Read that. So 62 and 6. 62 and 6. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6. Mm -hmm. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, mm -hmm. which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Uh -huh. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. You see that? We shouldn't keep silence in our prayers. We should always be sending up our prayers. Read. And give him no rest. And give him what? No rest. Don't give the Most High any rest. Keep sending them prayers up. Read. Till he established. Till we get this kingdom. Read. And till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. You see that? Because even that woman that kept making a request, eventually the judge, which is the most high God, is going to send his son. But we gotta we gotta be continual in prayer. We gotta be fervent in prayer. Alright? Give me uh give from there, give me Tobit twelve and eight. 
because I'm still showing you how we get our prayers answered. So we got to be consistent. We got to pray for the right thing. We got to be keeping the commandments. All right. What else will help get our prayers answered? Tobit chapter 12 and verse 8. Tobit chapter 12 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. Prayer is good. Prayer is good. With fasting. With fasting. And all. So prayer is good with fasting and all. Three. And righteousness. Uh huh. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. So, right, he's showing you that. It doesn't matter how much you pray, how much you fast, if you're not keeping the commandments. All of them work together. You got to pray, fast, and give alms. That will help have your prayers answered. All right. Uh, from there, give me Sirach 35 and verse 16. Sirach chapter 35, verse 16 and 17. So as we as we grow in this truth, we gotta learn what to pray for, how to pray, how we get our prayers answered, all of these things. Read that. Sirach chapter 35, verse 16. Mm -hmm. He that serveth the Lord shall be accepted with favor. So he that serveth the Lord shall be accepted with favor. Read. Sorry. And his prayer and shall his what? And his prayer shall reach unto the clouds. So the Most High is saying, when you serve in me, when you keep in my commandments, your prayers are going to reach unto the clouds. Read. Verse 17. The prayer of the humble pierces the clouds. Mm -hmm. Until it come nigh, he will not be comforted mm -hmm. and will not depart. Till the Most High shall behold to judge righteously and execute judgment. You see that? So a humble, righteous brother, he's going to keep sending them prayers up until the Most High issue judgment on this earth. So he's showing you the Most High wants us to continue praying for this kingdom. All right, give me Sirach 37 and 15. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, this is what you this is what you ultimately should be praying for. Sirach 37 and 15. Read that. Sirach chapter 37 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. And above all and this. And above all this, read. Pray to the Most High that he will direct thy way. And true. Right. And above everything, make sure that you're praying that the Most High guides and directs your path. Give me Matthew 6. All right. And for those who question, I know I know the one question we're going to get, who do we pray to? How do we pray? All right. Didn't get a chance to answer that. So I'm going to make it simple. You pray unto the Most High God in the name of Christ. John 14 and 6 it says, No man goeth unto the Father but by me. Let's get the example of the Lord's Prayer. We're going to end it with this. Matthew chapter 6. And start at verse uh, 9. Matthew chapter 6 verse 9. Mm -hmm. After this manner, therefore pray ye. After this manner, pray ye. Read. Our Father. Our Yah. Our Father. Our Yahweh. Our Father. Christ said, pray our Father. Read. Which art in heaven. Mm -hmm. hallowed, be, hallowed be thy name. Uh -huh. Thy kingdom come. We should pray for the kingdom to come. Read. Thy will be done. That his will is done. In earth, in earth, as it is in heaven, as it is in heaven, that everybody is following the law, statutes, and commandments. Read. Give us this day our daily bread, mm -hmm. and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Uh -huh. And lead us not into temptation. We should be praying that the Most High doesn't lead us into temptation. Read. But deliver us from evil. That we should be delivered from evil. Read. For thine is the kingdom uh -huh. and the power. And the glory forever. Amen. Alright, so with that, I pray y'all were edified. I pray, I pray you learned how to pray, what to pray for, how to get your praise answered. Alright, with that, we say shalom. I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.